Hey Turnip, so today we'll be learning how to make the egg gits. Egg gits is a very popular street snack in Hong Kong and it's also one of my childhood absolute favorites. So without further ado, let's get started on this cute little delicious recipe. So starting off, we are going to use three large eggs and these eggs are going to be the base of the flavor of the batter. And egg gits is very similar to the Belgian waffle and the American pancakes where um, the Belgian waffle is very crispy but the American pancake is also very soft. So the inner side of the um, egg gits are very soft, um, the outer side is very crispy. And for my turnips who are wondering why I'm wearing a warm fuzzy sweater, I filmed this a while back, back in January. So that's when it was really cold. So I'm definitely not like temperature crazy, like it's definitely way too warm for wearing a sweater. So just let you guys know. And if you guys hear some kind of weird music in the background, that's probably because of my sister's watching some Hong Kong drama and she refused to turn down the volume. So I apologize for that. And for this recipe, I got it from Nom Nom Panda and she does a really good job in explaining how to make egg gits, but only with pictures and in text format. So if you guys are interested in that, I've also put her link in down in my description box down below. So feel free to check that out as well. And as I mentioned, um, this video is uh, a while back, so the filming style might be a little bit different. So I hope you guys don't mind um, just filming style where I'm using pictures in the beginning as intro and then um, pictures in the outro as well. And of course, now we are going to add in our granulated sugar into our egg white and egg yolk that has been beaded together. And I think one of the great things about this recipe from Non Non Panda is that it's all in cup measurements. So it definitely makes it easier, especially for uh, a lot of my turnips who live in the US where we use um, cup measurements instead of gram scale measurements. And just keep on mixing, uh, I did small little spurts of motions and since I didn't have my mixing bowl because this is during my winter break, uh, a lot of my equipments were not as easy as it looks so it might be a little bit more difficult especially if you guys don't have a lot of baking equipment like a mixing bowl. Um, but you guys would definitely get there and trust me it would taste just as good. And of course mixing is not rocket science, you just need to make sure that the sugar is relatively incorporated into the egg yolk batter and that makes life easier because it will make your batter evenly sweet. And now proceeding on to the next step, we are going to add in our flour. In this step, I've already added in my baking powder so that it's all well incorporated in my all-purpose flour and we are just going to mix it well together. And of course, you guys know, um, for those who are more experienced with baking, you usually add in all your dry ingredients together and you add in all your wet ingredients together before combining both of them together. So right now I'm using whole milk and I'm adding in my milk and I'm also adding my melted butter and since my butter is freshly melted from the microwave it's kind of warm so the last thing I want to do is squash my egg and make scrambled eggs with my egg batter. So I'm adding the milk and the freshly melted butter together first before adding the egg wash. And then we are just going to mix it with our wooden spatulas and like I said earlier I do not have my mixer. Um, so I'm just going down with the old-fashioned way, just using a wooden spatula and just mix everything together. And of course, if I had a mixing bowl, um, mixing would make life so much easier, but since I don't, uh, I'll just mix with what I have. And after giving it a good mix, uh, we are going to add in our egg wash. And this time, we are not going to add in all at once. We're going to add it bit by bit, just so that we, our ingredients are getting used to each other and it's well incorporated together. And by also adding bit by bit, it will allow our flour to be evenly distributed as well with the egg wash. So after adding my last third of um, egg wash, I'm just going to mix it. And as you guys notice, it's still very clumpy, but trust me, it will get there. And if you guys have a stand mixer or a, a hand mixer, I definitely recommend using that because it just makes life so much easier and it just decreases the number of clumps. But if you guys don't, that's perfectly fine because I don't have my mixing um, ingredients on uh, utensils right here. So I'm just whisking everything and mixing it with my wooden spatula. I find that by using the whisk, it's easier because uh, it just breaks up the flour and also incorporates the egg yolk into to flour as well. And of course using the old-fashioned way using a whisk uh, it just makes life a little bit more um, complicated but it's also a little bit longer but trust me you get there and look at it, it has thinned out relatively well and we have mixed pretty well. And now we're going to add our batter into a container where we can pour easily and the point is it's supposed to be poured relatively fast because you'll be cooking it and making it at the same time. So just pour it all into the container and you'll be ready to go. 
And now here comes our most important equipment, this is the egg mold. I got this from Amazon and it was 10 dollars cheaper compared to Williams and Sonoma. Williams and Sonoma, um, they have great um, qualities but they are also kind of very expensive. Um, so I decided to go for a cheaper version. And this version has a lot more egg um, pockets so it has a lot more uh, wealth compared to one in Williams and Sonoma. But they work both just as fine and depending on your budget, um, you guys might want to opt in for a cheaper and a also durable one as well. But in retrospect, um, definitely the fact that you have more agates, um, that also means that your agates are smaller. So if you like the traditional agates um, where it's bigger, um, you guys could definitely opt in for the oil and sun oil version. And I'm just adding my vegetable oil and just like spreading out the oil with my um, brush just so that everything is well even coated. So when I do um, pour my batter, it doesn't stick onto the pan. And if you guys don't have a brush, you guys could use a um, towel and just rub it across um, with a chopstick or any stick so that make sure that you don't get your hands burnt. And I'm also set, um, put, setting on my heat in medium and it's just like warming up so that when I put my batter, it's just ready to go. And of course, we are also going to do the thing with the other side of the egg pan as well. And something to keep in mind is, is that um, depending on your stove, you guys might want to adjust your heat to a little bit higher than medium or a little bit lower than medium depending on your stove settings. And that is because um, the eggs must be cooked at a certain temperature and at a certain time so that it's well even and without getting burnt. Because these get burnt very easily and that's not what we want. And in order to create that crispy shell layer, we definitely need to make sure that our fire is on a good level. I, one thing I like to do is to do um, in a certain pattern so that I know which egg is, is being filled and I could just go back and forth and fill out the egg wells if it's decreasing by a little bit and then you guys can see that it's a very methodical process so that it's easier for you guys and of course if you guys decide to do um, randomly it might be a little bit more difficult but it's also very possible as well. I'm filling my egg is approximately 50% uh, full and then I'm just going to drizzle it. You guys do not need to worry because when we um, turn over our pan, uh, it's going to be well connected and well um, made together. And now that we have that done, we are going to enclose it and we're going to flip it over. And we're just going to let it cook um, 2 minutes on each side and then we should be done. Or until golden brown, but it should be relatively quick. Just check every 15 seconds on both sides um, to make sure that it's well cooked together. And just move your pan occasionally so that it's well cooked in all sides. Look at that, it's just perfectly golden brown and just perfect for snacks so you guys definitely have to give this a try. And of course this goes perfectly with the Hong Kong milk tea that I made a video on earlier so check that out as well. Hey turnips, I hope you guys enjoyed this super tasty tutorial on how to make the Hong Kong egg. It's, it's absolutely one of my top 10 favorite snacks of all time and you guys definitely have to give this a try. And if you guys like this, you guys can definitely check out the Hong Kong Pineapple Melon Bread which is like an absolute favorite. And of course on the right it is the best drink of all time and you guys definitely have to give that a try because it's the Hong Kong milk tea is so easy, so simple. And of course for more sweet delicious adventures, follow me on my channel and subscribe to me, thumbs up, likes and share. Bye!